Okay, so today I'm going to talk about one of the things that Ramanujan dealt with in, his, in the later part of his life, and that is Ramanujan's Tao function. It was introduced by him in his paper called On Certain Arithmetical Functions in 1916. It's a very modest title, but the function turned out to be one of the central objects of mathematics of the 20th century. So how is it defined? You take this formal power series, b of x, which is x times 1 minus x to the power 24, times 1 minus x squared to the power 24, times 1 minus x cubed to the power 24, and so on. So you will see that when you multiply them all out, you get a power series, which goes on forever, defining these coefficients tau n for every strictly positive n. So you've got a function from strictly positive natural numbers to all integers. <coughs> and you can compute it for small values of n. Here is a table which can be computed with little effort. <coughs> now the interesting thing is that Namanujan made some observations about this tau function and he made some conjectures. And these have turned out to play an important role in the mathematics of the previous century. One of his first observations was that this tau function, if you write it down as this series, you know, take, take any complex number whose real part is sufficiently big, then this series will converge. Here the coefficients are these tau ends, the same as this one. The difference between this and this is that x to the n has been replaced by 1 over n to the minus, n to the s. So this gives you a convergent power series. And the, num the sum always turns out to be a product over all primes of 1 over 1 minus tau p upon p to the s plus p to the 11 upon p to the 2s. So this is somewhat similar to the product that Euler found for what is called Riemann's zeta function. The zeta function is defined as the sum over all natural numbers n of 1 over n to the s, where s is uh, some complex number with real part, let's say, strictly greater than 1. And Euler proved that this sum is actually equal to this product over all prime numbers. So the product formula that Ramanujan conjectured for the tau function is somewhat similar to Euler's product formula for the, Ramanujan, for the Riemann zeta function. Now this was proved more or less immediately by model and now it's a part of what is called Hecke theory. One of the, big, one of the elementary consequences of this is that the tau function can, is completely determined by its values at the prime numbers. This was not obvious from the definition. Uh, so an, an arbitrary function is not going to be determined by its values at uh, prime numbers, but this one is. OK, so the second observation which Ramanujan made about this tau function is that tau of p for every prime p is always less than twice p to the 11 over 2 in absolute value. Now this turned out to be a very deep fact, and Ihara observed that it would be a consequence of Weyl's conjectures, which Weyl had made in the middle of the century, in order to count the number of solutions of polynomial equations defined over finite fields. A completely different area in some sense, but these conjectures were finally proved by Galin in 1973, and as a consequence, we now know Ramanujan's conjecture is true. The third set of observations which uh, Ramanujan made about this tau function are these congruences. For example, for every odd prime p, tau of p is 1 plus p to the 11 modulo 2 to the 5. Now this was proved soon afterwards by various people. Tau of p is congruent to 0, 2, or minus 1 modulo 23 depending upon whether p is not a square modulo 23 or whether p 
is of this form u squared plus 23v squared or if p is a square modulo 23 but not of this form. So and the third congruence which I have uh, written down is that tau of p is always congruent to 1 plus p to the 11 modulo the prime 691. Now these congruences was a list and one didn't quite understand where they come from. Sal is somebody who tried to understand them and he came up with these conjectures about modularity of Galois representations in, in the years 71 to 85. And these conjectures were finally proved by uh, Carey, Vettabergé and Kizin in the years 2006 to 2008. So these observations of Ramanujan about the congruences satisfied by the tau function turned out to be crucial uh, to spur Sarr to think about these things and try to understand the source of these congruences. And the last observation about this tau function, which Ramanujan didn't quite make, is something called the Sato Tate conjecture. Now you look at this number Tp for every prime p, which is tau p divided by 2 times p to the 11 over 2. You know that it's going to be in the interval minus 1 to plus 1 as a consequence of Ramanujan's conjecture, which is proved by Dalin. And therefore, you can ask, how are these Tps distributed in this interval as p varies? Are they all more on the positive side and less on the negative side? Or are they, in what way are they actually distributed? So in the 60s, Sato and Tate studied similar questions. And their conjecture was that the proportion of primes P such that Tp is a given interval AB is equal to this. This is two. 2 over pi, the integral from a to b of 1 of the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. And geometrically, it's just the area of this portion of the semicircle divided by the area of the whole semicircle. And this conjecture has only been proved very recently by Barnett Lamb, Gerati, Harris, and Taylor. Uh, in making some inroads as a consequence of their work on the Lagrange conjectures. So that's not the story of, that's not the end of the story of tau. There are still things which can be studied. For example, it's unknown whether there's a prime number, p, such that tau of p is equal to zero. Now to summarize in a few words what uh, I want to convey, there's this big theory in number theory called class field theory. That can be considered to be the work from Gauss to Tate. And in today's language, we would say that it's the theory of GL1. This work of Ramanujan on his tau function and his conjectures, they can be considered to be part of the theory of GL2. And Langlands has proposed a big set of conjectures which encompass the theory of GLN and other groups. So the impression I want to convey is that this tau function of Ramanujan, it's not an arbitrary function which you just write down uh, as a whim. It turns out to be a very central object of mathematics. And Ramanujan's observations have played a big role in the mathematics of the 20th century. Thank you.